Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create an early 20th century camera effect for your game. So what I mean about early 20th century camera effect is you could either have this as like kind of a black and white kind of fuzzy maybe bit of look or kind of a little bit later than that I have like a sepia kind of look. So which means a bit brownish. Uh, don't forget click the subscribe button and click the bell icon. You can stay up to date with every tutorial I have on this channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So we're going to be doing this mainly through something called post-processing. And I have this scene here, which I've taken from the asset store as I felt it's kind of, it's a nice scene. Uh, it's this one, Dark Fancy Kit. If you feel like checking it out, please do, uh, RuneMark Studio. Uh, it is free, so don't worry. If you want to check out any more of their stuff, please absolutely click on there and have a look. Uh, I've had no input from this. Um, there's, you know, I've had no contact with the developer of this. This is just something I've chosen because I quite like the look of it. And uh, this is the scene that I have. So as I said, it's all going to be done via post-processing. And to get post-processing, if you haven't already got it, you need to go to the asset store, type in post-processing stack, and it will be right here. So post-processing stack, you need to go on there and download it. Uh, it is free. Again, it's something from Unity Technologies. If you aren't fully aware of post-processing, check my channel out. I do have a couple of tutorials on post-processing. So we're creating that effect in this tutorial. So on our camera, make sure we drag and drop the post-processing runtime script right there. So this one. And we need to create that profile which allows us to create the effects. So right-click, create, and let's go down to post-processing profile. And let's call this 20th cent, short for century. So in here, we're going to be doing just a couple of things. Um, in fact, before we do that, make sure on the camera we do have allow HDR ticked, uh, untick MSAA, and also rendering path set as deferred. Again, this kind of brings a bit more quality to what we're creating. So the main thing we're going to do is create this post-processing profile, and let's drag and drop it here into the profile before we go any further so we can see within our scene all the changes. Uh, to see in the scene all the changes that we make along the way make sure we go here on the toggle and just make sure you have image effects ticked if you want to see it in the scene view as you go along like I will. So let's tick anti-aliasing, let's tick ambient occlusion and set the ambient occlusion a little bit higher than what it is, uh, increase the radius just a little bit to about there so what all this is doing is allowing the light to kind of be blocked in these certain sections. Uh, next what we'll need is a bit of motion blur I guess. I guess we could have that because there is a bit of an animation with a camera so it won't hurt to have that ticked. Uh, eye adaptation we don't really need. Bloom. Yep we'll tick bloom. Uh, we'll leave it as default for now. Uh, we'll tick color grading because this is where it mainly plays on the fact that we want to create a different quality of image. So we want to make sure we do have color grading ticked. Change the tone mapper to filmic and we'll keep post exposure as zero and let's increase the temperature to about 60. So already you can see it having that kind of effect. We want to keep the tint as it is and the hue shift as it is and we can play around with the saturation and take the saturation away. And already you can see just how much of an impact that is having here. If we were to decrease the temperature, this is where you would have the black and white effect. But I want to start with that sepia kind of effect. So I'm going to leave it, up. in fact, we'll leave it at 55. You can also then change the contrast depending on what you want to do. Obviously, too little contrast just makes it look a bit silly. Too much contrast can make it look not quite right. So maybe contrast just up a tiny little bit. So as we go down, next thing we'll need is let's add the vignette or vignette, however you would like to pronounce that and add grain. And uh, this grain needs to be unticked on colored. We just want it black and white. Size a little bit bigger and intensity again a little bit bigger. Uh, last thing we need to do, not that it is going to make too much of a difference, but we can add a dirt texture to the bloom. And I'm going to click on here and search for dirt and we have lens dirt. Let's use lens dirt 02 for now and let's press play. So this is how our scene looks. We can see we've kind of gone old school here with the way it looks. And we can actually now change our temperature to pretty much zero. And then you have your black and white. 
contrast changed right there. So now you've gone kind of a whole black and white look. And we can just about see the lens dirt as the texture which is overlaying and we can increase the intensity of that but it's not going to make too much of a difference you can see it just here uh, what we can do is we can increase the post exposure just a little bit so now you can see we have really have that kind of old black and white look and this is all done like i said through post processing now on the thumbnail of this is the kind of sepia look and we can just do that by increasing the temperature. Too high makes it look too much, so you need it somewhere in between. So it's all about playing with the settings we have here. Uh, changing the lens dirt texture may make a difference if you find like a grainy kind of texture that you can use. If you drag and drop and try that out, it may kind of improve how it looks. Uh, what we may need to do on the bloom as well is turn down the softeny and increase the threshold just a little bit and let's press play and take the temperature back down to zero so there we go if you play around with this temperature you will certainly get different styles and different looks of how you want um, that image effect to look but this kind of effect is actually kind of cool you can change the, ten uh, change the intensity of that dirt but it's not going to make too much of a difference when the threshold is quite high so I think it kind of depends how you want it to look playing with the post exposure as well is also quite handy so you can see decreasing the uh, post exposure brings this kind of effect and as I said there's the sepia version of it so that is how we can create an early kind of 20th century camera look and feel anywhere it really is quite simple and it's not too difficult when you're dealing with post-processing if you know what you're doing. And as I said earlier, if you don't know much about post-processing, please check out my channel. I have tons of videos on how we can refine and use post-processing and make things look kind of cool. So I've turned ad eye adaptation on there. Um, just play around with it if you want to get different effects. So guys, I hope that's been helpful. Um, if you want to know anything else about this or think you can add anything or want to know more about this scene or anything, leave a comment below and I will do my best to get back to you. If not, I'm sure someone in this great community will be able to. So guys, thank you very much for watching.